look bald. I promise you I'm not. Like, I got hair. Hold on. No offense to people that are actually bald. There are some people that can actually really, really pull it off. I am one of those that just can't. Hi, my name is Kat. If you can hear and see kind of, it's like really freaking bright out there. It's still raining. And I really, really, really wish the rain would just go away because it's making my body cry. But anyway, I was going to have, um, I had a vlog planned for y'all to watch, but that doesn't seem to be like it's going to happen. When I got there thinking that I was going to get some answers about the blood work I recently did for IVIG, they weren't able to give me any answers. They had to do even more blood work before I can get answers, and they're going to call me about those answers from my understanding. But I think I'm also, but I'm also going to have another appointment too. It's confusing. See, if they're calling me to tell me something, what are they going to call me? I mean, what are they going to tell me in the office? I don't really know. But I don't want to just post that video and be like, we still don't know any answers because like that was like the last video was a, like a, a cliffhanger or something. I don't know. I don't really know what else to call them. But cliffhangers are a big thing in um, the chronic illness community with your health because appointments take so long to get to. I'm going to go back inside because it's cold. Okay, I'm back in my room. Let's pretend that this thing is not falling down. That, that'd be awesome of you. Normally when I don't have a video, I'm like freaking out. Like, what am I going to post? What am I going to post? What am I going to post? Because I try to post at least once a week. Um, the only time I haven't posted once a week was when my laptop broke. And so I've been doing really good. Like, um, I'm normally not consistent with anything. And like, the fact that I've been consistent with YouTube is really cool. <sighs> Today I thought I would talk about why diagnosis takes so long. So the blood work that I was talking about earlier for the IVIG, on that particular blood work we're not looking for a diagnosis. We're looking for a yes from the insurance company so that I can do IVIG, but I still am currently looking for some answers for some symptoms that I have. I have made, re I've recently made some appointments and I want to like explain to you how far away they are and like it's kind of making me freak, freak out a little bit because like first of all I have to wait several months in pain without any answers and um, my, my channel really heavily relies on vlogs for me to fill in weeks and with them so spaced out it's, I'm like wow I'm gonna have to come up with video topics on my own and I have a lot but it just takes a lot to put that kind of video together because I like to research things and even though it's not like um, Einstein type of research it still takes a while when you're only awake like 48 hours out of the day. Look, this video is not going to be doing, I'm not going to be doing any research though because like it's all going to be based on um, what do you call it? Um, personal experience. 15 years is the longest it's taken in my lifetime to get something diagnosed. That's a long time. I'm 21 so that's the majority of my life. Um, the particular illness that I'm talking about is interstitial cystitis. It has not being diagnosed with that caused a lot of trauma in my childhood and I'm still I still need to write I still need to make my second um, part to that video I made. I still haven't done it. I apologize. I guess actually now to think about it hypogammaglobinemia is probably the one that um, took the longest as of now to get diagnosed because I've had that since I was born and they just didn't find it until I was 20. That particular condition, I don't know if it's necessarily a condition or a disease, it's an immune disorder. So I guess disorder, <laughs> I don't know. Um, it didn't really cause me too much like grief in my life. Yeah, I was sick all the time, but um, it didn't, it doesn't even compare to the amount of trauma and pain and um, disruption that interstitial cystitis has caused in my life, especially the fact that it took so long to get diagnosed because I was like adamant there's something wrong with me and everybody else was thinking that it was all in my head. And again, even if something is a mental illness, it doesn't mean it's not real. Your brain is just as much of an organ as your heart or your colon or your uterus or your bladder or anything. <sighs> no! Ah! So why does getting diagnosed take so long? Majority of the time specialty doctors have a long waiting list so you're going to have to wait to even start seeing the doctor and then once you start seeing the doctor then they have to work you in and that working you in could be taking 
a month, three months, four months, six months. It just depends how busy the doctor is when your next follow-up appointment is. With my new um, neurologist, which I assumed at first he was only going to be my, uh, my doctor for Tourette's, but I've actually decided to um, try to get him to be my full main neurologist. And so I've made an appointment for that, but that's not even until April of next year. So my all of my other like neurological symptoms that we don't know that's that we don't have a name for yet, it's we're not even gonna start working on them again until April. My next appointment with his assistant, which I've never seen before, is until January. So that's three months from now. So I got diagnosed and then I'm gonna have to wait three months for my next appointment, which is a long time. <laughs> Mm. So, you know, I've said this in a lot of my videos. Doctor's appointments take time to get to because of how many people they're seeing. Um, there's only so many specialists where you live. And the fact that I'm on Medicaid makes it really hard to find doctors. And most of the Medicaid doc most of the doctors that take Medicaid are all booked because all of the people that are on Medicaid are going to them. Another reason that diagnosis takes so long is insurance. Because, like, when I was going and seeing Dr. Cantrell, we were waiting months and months and months for like MRIs and procedures like that because we were trying to get them approved through insurance and at that time I was using Aetna which is my mom's insurance most of the time I can use that every now and then but I try not to use it because the insurance isn't good and then we end up in medical debt and we're already in a lot of medical debt <laughs> ah! no monkeys ah! and so like if you're in the boat, if you're in the, if I keep hitting my little table and that's making my camera move, but um, if you're in the same boat with me of having insurance and doctor's appointments and um, like even trouble finding doctors that work with your insurance, don't give up. It's very easy just to be like, well, if they don't give a shit, why should I care? Having that attitude is totally understandable. What, what's important is not listening to it. In the moment, if it makes you feel better, if it if it makes you feel better to like scream and cry and cuss out the doctors, like as long as you're not doing it to their face, like say what you need to say in your own room to a pillow to somebody else, get it out some way, but make sure you get your butt up on that next appointment and go and be your biggest advocate that you can possibly be because the only person that is the best person to advocate for yourself is yourself. You owe it to yourself. Getting a diagnosis and getting better treatment is a part of self-love. It's for yourself. The doctor is the, the doctor's life isn't going to get changed by getting um, medical treatment. Your life is the one that's going to get treatment. You're the you're the blah, 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 I can't talk. You're the one that needs this treatment to live your best possible life. And you owe it to yourself to live your best possible life. All that frustration at the end of the day is going to be so worth it when you get a diagnosis. It's going to be so, so worth it. I wouldn't have gotten my diagnosis for interstitial cystitis. I wouldn't have gotten diagnosed with hypogammaglobinemia. I wouldn't have gotten diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. With I wouldn't have gotten my carpal tunnel diagnosed. I would have constantly been in pain and wondering why I'm in pain. Why am I screaming weird shit? What's wrong with me? The the negative I would have never been able to like move on and con and fully like process the fact that I'm disabled and I'm sick without getting those things diagnosed. If my parents hadn't taken me to the doctor when I was a child and gotten my juvenile rheumatoid polyarticular arthritis diagnosed, if they hadn't gotten my scoliosis diagnosed, if they hadn't gotten my dyslexia diagnosed, if they hadn't gotten my attention deficit disorder diagnosed. School would have been so much harder than it already was. If I hadn't gone to the psychologist, I wouldn't have found out that I have autism. All these important diagnoses has helped me in learning to love myself and, you know, not being aggravated with myself because I'm in the bathroom 24-7 or because I can't wear jeans. I'm going to look weird to the rest of everybody else because I'm wearing, like, pajama pants to Christmas because I'm having sensory issues and I couldn't explain to them because I didn't have the words to do that. Just remember, you owe it to yourself to push through the bullshit that the insurance company, your doctor's offices, whatever crap you're going through to get to your answers and to get to being able to really start treating your illnesses is so worth it. You owe yourself to, to go through that head on and get those answers because they're going to change your life. You're going to 
it, you're not going to get stressed out when people ask you what's wrong because you're going to have the answers. You might not still want to tell them yet. At least it's not like, I don't know, I can't tell you. That was a little bit of a rant. I don't know if that made sense. But just remember, all your feelings about how long it's taking, what people are thinking of you, um, are valid. I know a lot of doctors can make people that are actually sick feel like hypochondriacs, which is, it's honestly upsetting because we we should be able to go to a doctor and tell them exactly how we feel and be totally honest and vulnerable in front of a doctor without worrying that they're going to like twist what we say, not believe us, all these things. And when I go to the doctor, especially a new doctor, I'm very, very nervous because I don't know what type of doctor I'm going to be seeing. Um, there are some doctors that you almost have to convince them to help you. And when you can only go to certain, so, so many certain doctors, when you, and when your um, insurance kind of dictates who you can go to, that can be really scary. Some appointments that I have coming up, which are on my phone, is I'm seeing Dr. O'Neill in November. Um, my next appointment with my, with Dr. Costa, which is, um, my hypogammaglobinemia doctor, he's an oncologist, um, is until November 15th. January so far I only have two appointments, which is the 7th and the 25th. The doctor's appointment that I'm going to on the 25th is a new doctor. He's going to be like the second opinion for POTS and um, depending on what he says we might look into EDS. Not really much left to say. Just remember if you're going through this to listen to your body. You know your body better than anybody else. And so if you think you're sick, you're most likely sick. If you come across doctors not, not believing you, you know, you might need to find another doctor. And if you can't find another doctor, I don't really have too much advice for you. I would really look into gaslighting because a lot of doctors gaslight when they really shouldn't. It's manipulative and it's honestly like, I honestly think it's dangerous for doctors to do that. And you know, some doctors might not even realize that they're doing it, but doctors definitely do gaslight. And the reason I think it's so damaging is because people are going to doctors in a vulnerable time and um, doctors are normally looked at somebody that they can trust. And if you go into a doctor's office and they're sitting there telling you that they don't believe your symptoms, then um, you start to question yourself. That's the whole thing of gaslighting. It's a manipulative thing. And Dr. Cantrell very much did gaslight me. And it took me a while to realize it because when they're talking to you, you don't really see it as a gaslighting thing. It's like later on you're like, wait a minute. That's why I, I really think that's why it took so long for me to realize that Cantrell wasn't going to help me. She kept looking into seizures because she was a seizure specialist and ignoring all my other symptoms. Which um, honestly wasted a lot of my time and I'm still a little upset with her. But what could I do? You know, I just went to another doctor and that took forever to find a doctor. And so it looks like my um, tick specialist isn't just going to be a tick specialist. He's going to be my full-on neurologist. Um, his appointments do seem to be spread far and really far apart. And so I might end up having to find another doctor um, if it's going to take too long. Because I've already been waiting for so many years. Waiting months between each appointment. It just seems like I'm going to keep getting worse without any answers, and that part is really scary. Before I go, I just want to say a lot of the people that are watching my videos aren't subscribed. So if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Click the button! Subscribe! And make sure you click the bell because YouTube's weird and you won't get my videos if you don't click the bell. Also, don't be shy. Make sure you comment. I want this community to be supportive for everybody. I want it to be a both-way thing. Me support you, you support me. Um, I want a really, really loving YouTube community, and so far I've really gotten that, and I'm thankful for that, but there are so many of you that aren't commenting. Don't be shy. I'm not going to bite you, I promise. Don't forget that I love you. Thank you for staying alive. I'll see you next time. Bye!